morning to my dear students and welcome to our social science class so we have uh, almost completed our chapter and today i'm going to teach you about the last two topics which are left in this chapter so uh, in the second last topic is about agriculture and irrigation process in chola dynasty or what happened in the chola kingdom how it rose so we have studied a lot about how it rose and what are the important uh, distinct features of chola dynasty that is your um, uh, bronze uh, deities and also the temples right so today we are going to study about agriculture so basically in chola dynasty the achievement was about the development of agriculture right agriculture is the important aspect of a uh, of a nation and mostly in that era agriculture was very important occupation for most of the uh, people out there and that is why with the help of this agriculture event chola dynasty gain a lot of importance as well as achievement so let us see how did the chola rulers improve agriculture so uh, in a way they know that with the help of agriculture they can improve their status that is why they paid a lot of attention to agriculture right so to improve the agriculture what they did the first option is clearing forest land to bring more land under cultivation so the areas which were under forest forest areas were actually cleared so that they can do agriculture in the or they can go for cultivation in the areas then irrigation works were developed walls were dug i have given a video or oh sorry i have given a picture of wall you can see wells were dug then these are the, the second one is canals were built where from where irrigation uh, uh, process will be very helpful and easier also and tanks were constructed to collect rainwater so these are the important aspect uh, which were done in irrigation development wells were dug Canals were built and tanks were constructed to collect rainwater so that they can, uh, you know, um, so so that the rainwater can help in irrigation process. And also, they built embankments. You can see here I have given a picture of embankments. This is the picture of embankments. You know, Mathauri. So these are the areas how embankments were built to prevent flooding. Right. Nowadays we often hear in news Mothauri, 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 Bhagise. Right. So these are the area Mothauri is known as embankment. And next we have the Kaveri, uh, the Kaveri River provided water for irrigation and fertile soil. So you can see here I have shown in the map. This is the Kaveri area, Kaveri River and this um, Kaveri river provided water for irrigation and fertile soil so because of there are many tributaries before falling into the bay of bengal there are tributaries, tributaries which falls in tanzavur and uraipur and because of these uh, tributaries there are concentration of the fertile land or fertile soil and which is uh, uh, which is uh, which have formed as a good a good ailment for agriculture because for doing agriculture you need fertile soil and a good soil is important for doing cultivation so Kaveri river helped a lot in the process of um, uh, irrigation as well as for fertile soil which is very helpful in cultivation okay and next we have uh, there's a picture in your book the uh, yeah, error mark is given you mentioned in NCT book so sluice gate we often have sluice gate in many areas like Shantipur we have we have in Narangi um, Sadgaon area we have sluice gate in many areas so you must be thinking what are sluice gates the sluice gates are built to uh, improve the flow of water right you can see here how gates are being made to improve the flow of water so um, again coming to the next topic these are very important things before going to the proceeding to the next topic you must learn few of the important um, definition or concept so r r is known as now because we are going to start with the administration in the kingdom right how administration was reorganized by chola ruler and um, how they actually uh, changed the entire scenario of the kingdom or the administration so R which is known as settlement of peasants so a uh, group of peasants or the settlement of peasants are known as R then we have Naru so group of villages with settlements of peasants were cause were called was called Naru uh, so Naru is like an association or a uh, assembly 
लाइक नारुआ उर्वान उर्तू उर्थ्री सो देर देर आर वेरियस वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ एंड वेरियस कम्युनिटीज ऑफ पीजन आर देयर सो ऑल द कम्युनिटीज टुगेदर आर नोन एज नारू राइट आई कैन सी हियर पिक्चर्स आई हैव गिवन आर वन आर टू आर थ्री एंड एंटायरली इट्स नोन एज नारो देन वी हैव वेलाला आ कास्ट ऑफ रिच पीजेंस देन वी हैव ब्राह्मदेया लैंड गिफ्टेड टू ब्राह्मणस बाय किंग्स details of such grants were recorded in copper plates as shown in the picture already i have uh, done in the previous video how land grants are being uh, given in the copper plates about because the brahmanas helped the uh, kings to write up uh, the prashastis and write about their praises about their victories so that is how land grants were given to the brahmanas and these are known as what brahma daya velala are known as the rich peasants high caste a caste of rich peasants and naru are the institution or the assembly of the settlement of peasants and one settlement of peasants are known as or so now we are going to study about the administration of cholas so what happened uh, chola state was a centralized bureaucratized uh, monarchy you know the ruler is the one who will uh, you know make the decisions for the entire kingdom maintain large royal standing army so chola chola empire had a large army then um, uh, which was recruited and controlled by the chola rulers directly it was administered in the following way so the army was act actually controlled and administered by the chola rulers themselves they have large group of armies and they have a monarchy based administration where the uh, decisions were being either taken by the king or the queen so here let us know so local level brahman village assembly they are known as sabha so the there are two actually sabha or the two assemblies were formed one of brahman brahmanical and another of non brahmanical so the brahmanical sabha of assemblies are known as sabha and non brahmanical assemblies are known as naru or local peasant assembly are known as or already we have understood about it right so among the uh, peasants also there are some rich peasants there are some high class or uh, high caste peasants so they are the they are known as velara and ve sorry velala this caste exercise considerable control over affairs of naru under the supervision of central chola government um, there are rich peasants known as velala right so under velara falls naru right under naru falls or right so association of traders known as nagaram occasionally perform administrative functions in town even one of the associations of traders known as nagaram they sometimes functions in the town administrative functions they do so sabha looked after brahma deva like the brahman look after the brahma deva sabha had separate committees to look after irrigation works temple and charity so the brahmanical assembly they look after irrigation works temple and charity right so members of sabha got elected through a lucky draw candidate could contest election only if they had their own homes aged between 35 to 70 years were well versed in vedas and administrative matters honest etc so these are the criteria of choosing a member of sabha for example among the brahmins also there were some criteria needed to be called as brahma deva or the um, mem member of a sabha like for example they there is a lucky draw and under that there are some conditions the candidate the candidate should contest election only if they have their own homes means own land and they should be age of between 30 Five to seventy years, and they should have a greater knowledge of Vedas and administrative matters, and they should be honest. So these are some of the criteria which are needed for the members of Sabha, and they are chosen by the lucky draw. Okay. So we have come to the end of the chapter. So we have learned a lot about the chapter. We came to know about new kingdoms where we, uh, how they emerged, and how uh, people fought for. Uh, like how we learned about the administration of the empire before. Then we came to know about how people fought for wealth. 
how the rulers fought for wealth. We came to know about um, a famous uh, sultan who robbed or who plundered India many times and mostly they attacked temples. Then we came to know about the rise of Chola Empire. We came to know about the important distinct features of Chola Empire that is temples and bronze deities and we came to know about uh, <clears throat> agriculture and irrigation process in Chola dynasty and also about the reorganized administration in the Chola dynasty. So these are some of the term terminologies that we have studied in the chapter that is Sultan, then the, we have studied about Mubin Devalam, then we have studied about tripartite struggle, we have studied about Nagaram, Ur, Sabha, then Gujara Pratihara who ruled Rajasthan and Gujarat, then Rashtrakutas who ruled over Western Deccan, Palas ruled over Bengal, Cholas ruled over Tamil Nadu, Chalukyas ruled over Karnataka and Pallavas ruled over Kanchipuram in South India. So we have completed our chapter successfully and I hope all of you have understood the chapter and uh, there will be a test on 26th of this month. Please uh, be ready with your first and ch second chapter of history. So thank you. Have a nice day and God bless you. And I am also giving you the question answers today. So uh, I'll, okay, I'll give the question answers tomorrow and also I'll do a small, uh, small recapitulation of the chapters in our next class. So thank you. Have a nice day and God bless you.